Edificious is the architectural BIM design software by Akka Software. In Edificious, we can easily model a 3D model of a building, model outdoor spaces, automatically generate and view detailed working drawing and construction documents, get a detailed cost estimate of an entire project, easily connect with the other Akka software solution for structural calculation, thermal and acoustic check, and design the building electrical system too. Edificious is currently one of the leading bin software solutions certified by Smart Building for IFC import and export. Let's have a closer look at the software interface. When we first launch the software, we can see the program's home page, where we have on the left hand side a menu with a typical option to create a new file, open already available objects, and modify the program settings. The central part is the editing and modeling area that adapt in relation to various choices relating to the file menu. At the top right we have various links to our online service. In the middle we have the indispensable video that will help us to start working with edificios. And here, in the bottom, we have some forum discussion as well. We begin to work by creating a new project. Creating a new document or create a new project group for addressing remodeling and renovation project, design revision and project variations. As you can see, we immediately start from the ground floor level as the default level. Let's take a quick look at the interface and start to get familiar with its structure. At the top we have the program toolbar with the following menus. The file, drawings, tools, windows, service and questions mark. On the left, we have the navigator with all the nodes relating to our project management. On the bottom left, we can choose the BIM environment in which to work. We have the architectural design environment, the part relating to edificious land, terrain modeling and landscaping design, the bill of quantity for construction cost estimating and the specific area for launching the various integration process with other ACA software solution. On the right, we have the property toolbox, which is contextualized according to the selected objects. Then we have the vertical toolbox, with copy, background and selection filters. Let's start our modeling from the ground floor. In the drawing menu we have the object submenu divided into architectural with the various parametric objects relating to the drawing models, the 2D graphics where we can insert elementary graphics such as line, polyline or other drawing and modeling facilities to simplify design such as magnetic grid, lines, DXF, DWG, raster images and so on. Then we have access to the 3D magnetic grid editor and the level management section. To insert an object, simply select it from the menu. In this case we will insert a vertical envelope. The building envelope is inserted with two clicks. The first defines the starting point and the second the end point. With the first click, we can set the start point, then rotate to set a direction. Choose its alignment axis with the F5 and F6 keys, or even type in the exact measurement followed by the Enter key to confirm. To delete the building envelope, we can define selection rectangle, and then delete the object with the Del key. Another drawing method is to use a DXF or a DWG cut drawing as a reference to trace upon. Again, we will access this tool from the object menu, click within the 3D drawing area, then select the CAD file to import and confirm. We now need to specify a scaling factor in order to set the correct scaling proportion. In this case the drawing was defined in meters, so we will type 1 as our scaling factor for this drawing. If the drawing was in centimeter, we will have entered 0.01. You will notice that the imported cut drawing is locked to the mouse cursor, and with a final click we can fix it into position. Now let's see how the building envelope entities are inserted. We can either use the appropriate architectural entities and simply trace over the cut drawing using the snap drawing gates and we can use the F5 and F6 keys to set the alignment axis. This is the manual method, 
but that efficiency truly increases our productivity even with the simple things. In fact, we also have more advanced driving accelerators, such as the Magic Wand XF DWG, that automatically recognize the wall thickness by simply crossing over the wall in the code drawing. The crossing direction also defines the alignment axis for that given wall. Let's finish off inserting all walls for these floor levels. Of course, while defining our floor plan, we can still make any change with simple editing feature, or they can be selected to modify their properties saying as they are parametric objects. Let's take a closer look at the characteristic of each object. Starting off with the building envelopes, we have the possibility to choose a material layer composition. Clicking on the first button activates the editor that allows us to change the material layer composition. The three dotted button brings us to the beam object library, where we can choose from a wide range of material layer organized into different folders. At this point, we will choose this Mason restructure type in isolated brick blocks. Click apply and you will notice how this new material layer is applied. Talking about increasing productivity, we also have other useful accelerator for modeling operations. This is the magnetic grid, which can be of various shapes. We have rectangular, radial, rectangular double, or triangular grid. The operation is the same. Select the object and click on the drawing area to define column of row settings. You can type in the value directly, so we will have a column of 5 meters and a vertical distribution in rows. For example, one of 3.9 meters, another one of 1.5 meters, and to finish, one of 5.5 meters. To confirm, we will click on the OK button and notice that we have the magnetic grid anchored to the mouse cursor. In this case, we can enter it here to create an additional environment. For example, let's select these envelopes. As seen previously, with the F keys, we can modify the alignment axis. By holding down Shift key and clicking on the other entities, we can do a multiple selection of the same object type and then decide to use a new material layer for all selected entities, like a 10 cm brick partition wall. By confirming with the Enter key, we can notice that the side of the wall, with its defined alignment, remained fixed. If we select the wall again, which this time will be a 300 mm reinforced concrete wall, we will use the magic wand tool and its automatic recognition feature from the 2D magnetic grid to insert all wall sections together. By simply tracing a selection rectangle, we will select our grid, choose the desired aligning axis from this box, for example the central axis, and quickly insert the other envelopes too. We will make a multiple selection again, and with a selection rectangle you will notice that we have selected both the building envelopes and the 2D magnetic grid object. This is where the entity filters come in useful. I can choose which entity I want to keep selected. In this case the building envelopes, supposing that I need to assign a different material layer, in fact we want the previously used partition wall type. The F2 key resents our current view to extent. At this stage, let's see some other function and see them in more detail by dropping the building envelope separately. Let's quickly draw a building envelope. We will then select it and set the wall thickness as constant or variable. In this case, we can change the wall shape. As you can see, both sides of the wall are now editable. 
With the right mouse button click on the wall segment. We can insert an extra modeling node. Again, selecting a segment, we can convert the strike segment to arc. And therefore create an entirely new shape of wall. Switching to the 3D view, we can see the result of our design. It goes without saying that whatever we model in 2D and the various levels nodes is also generated in 3D. This means that we have a real model with different views. In addition, we have designed this wall with a variable thickness, but we can also create a scarp wall. In this case, the thickness variation can be defined in the elevation and along the vertical axis. Alignment is modified with the F5 or F6 key, or by setting it in a window. We can also model the wall according to our needs. In fact, let's suppose we want to modify the shape of our wall. We can set a different height at the two ends independently and change its length directly from here, together with the wall A. Then we can modify the level setting, the assigned material texture, the drawing model layers and other info related to its overall graphic appearance, such as its color when represented in the level nodes, and we can even lock the selected entity in order to avoid selecting them and making unwanted changes. You can still select locked entities by changing the select mode to select locked entities from this menu. In the IFC file type management section, we can provide precise information and where we have the general properties, type name, description tag, and so on. We can choose the property to add, then, clicking on the Edit button, we have the Properties Editor. We can use the default layout, or add a new group and then a new property. Let's add a new group and then add several properties, for each of which you can choose among predefined variables. We can add attachments such as images, PDF file, or other type of file, to each of our objects to increase the amount of information provided for each entity. Moving to the 3D view, we have the typical mouse-related navigation tools that allow us to rotate the model, keeping the right mouse button pressed, or move the model, keeping the mouse scroll wheel button pressed, and single entity selection by clicking the left mouse button. Let's return to the ground floor level and press the F2 keys to zoom to extents.